You are listening to the PRO Media Network, the next level in entertainment. That's right, 262. We're going to recap the Pelicans lost the third in a row. This time to the Golden State Warriors, 131 to 121. We're going to break the game down and tell you, in our perspective, what happened. Now, we'll give you a round of applause to our new and established listeners as we continue to get new subscribers to the Pelican Post Game Report. And tonight, we're going to go over this Golden State Warriors game, 131 and 121. The Pelicans dropping three games in a row. Anthony Davis did return to this game. Uh, didn't make much of a difference because the end result was the fact that the Pelicans still lose. Now, of course, in the previous show, I, of course, I told you I picked the uh, Pelicans to lose this game, so it's not really a surprise. We knew it would be a difficult contest to beat Golden State. And like Draymond Green said during the post game report, he said that they wanted to win this one for Demarcus Cousins, who said, who told the team that he really wanted them to get this win against his former team, and they were motivated to do it. We'll break that down here today. Also, other topics that will be covered on the Pelican Post Game Report today is the fact that very strange stuff going on here with the Pelicans, man. Besides going over our statistical breakdown over the game, we're going to talk about Davis' comments that he made. Of course, a lot of people saying the the kind of weird back and forth between Elvin Gentry, Anthony Davis, and DeMarcus Cousins at the end of the game. Cousins went over and greeted the guys. And of course, a comment, a report that was released by ESPN's Mark Spears uh, saying that Davis is hopeful that Cousins can return to the Pels. Now, of course, we know the Pelicans are very famous for bringing back former players. They do it all the time. They did it with Darius Miller as a recent example. He was a guy that they brought back to the team, even Tim Frazier. So they're known to recycle guys back into the organization. Dale Demps loves to do that motion. So we'll talk about that article as well. We'll also give our injury report and talk about uh, injuries that occurred. Of course, Darius Miller, Alfred Payton, those guys will have DC to give us some information on that. And then <clears throat> as we do customary with the show, we'll have Alvin Gentry comment, chiming in with his thoughts on the game. Uh, third loss of the row, third loss in the row for the Pelicans after winning four, they dropped three. Now they dropped to third in the Southwest division. Uh, very tough for the Pelicans as they're trying to find a way to kind of get out of this night. So how things, so how quick things happen in NBA. So speedy. Just, just not too long ago, the Pelicans were on a full game winning streak. Now they're on a three-game losing streak. Boy, you talk about peaks and valleys. Wow. Anyway, and then after this, we'll have the preview for the Portland Trailblazer game in the second half. We'll break that game down in our customary fashion. So without further ado, let's get right into it on Podcast 262 on the Pelican Postgame Report. Now, starting off, Pelicans lose 131-121 against the Golden State Warriors. In this one, field goal attempt for the Pelicans, they shot 48% in this game, which is pretty decent. Uh, field goal percentage shooting, 44 of 92 for the team. Problem is, the Golden State Warriors shot 53%, 47 of 89. Better percentage for them. Three-pointers, the Pelicans were 12 of 35 from downtown. Golden State Warriors were 16 of 32 for 50%. It's hard to beat a team when they're shooting 53% from the field and 50% from the three-point line. It's damn near impossible. Pelicans shot 34% from the three-point line. Free throws, the Pelicans were 21 of 27. This one for about 78%, right around where I think they should be. The Golden State Warriors were 21 of 30 for 70%. The Pelicans were out-rebounded 54-51 to 51 by Golden State. They were out-assisted badly by Golden State 39-24. to 24. Golden State had more steals 10-8, to 8, more blocks 4-2, to 2. and of course the Pelicans did have 16 turnovers, which they gave up 16 points. They did have, uh, the Golden State had 17 turnovers. The Pelicans forced 24 turno- uh, points out of them. Fast break points was the obvious glaring stat to me. Golden State 32 
points in fast break versus the Pelicans. Nine. Did you hear me? I said nine. They had nine fast break points and the Pelicans game is supposed to be that of which it is supposed to run. 32 to nine on that one. Points in the paint the Pelicans did when that's that 52 to 50, uh, 58 to 52. And ultimately, you know, that's what happened. Before we get into our breakdown on the individual basis, let's go to Coach Elvin Gentry and let him tell you what happened in this game is Coach Gentry. Um, Typical game against these guys, you know. They're a great offensive team, and, you know, they take advantage of your mistakes. Uh, I thought that, uh, you know, we were pretty solid defensively. You know, they probably made eight shots that uh, no one else in the league could be capable of making. Uh, And those are the kind of shots you have to live with. But I thought our guys did a good job of of just hanging in and staying in the game. But, uh, you know, we had some plays that's going to cost you against these guys. You know, we had two straight really bad possessions uh, where we threw the ball away, and that's a five-point difference right there. It just uh, doesn't work against these guys. And then uh, uh, transition defense, you know, they they give up 42 points in transition against these guys. You're going to give up quite a bit because they throw it up and they take threes, and they're very capable of making those threes. But what you have to do is that you got to just be back and have your defense set uh, so that you can tr- try to take those away. But, you know, all in all, I thought we played pretty good. Uh, you know, obviously the turnovers bother you somewhat, but I thought we did a good job of forcing turnovers uh, against them also, and we ended up with 24 points on their turnovers. But uh, the 12 offensive rebounds, they're, they're, they're not a great offensive rebounding team. We gave up 10 first half uh, offensive rebounds and those other things that really kind of, uh, at the end of the day, you, you have to play extremely well to beat them. And we played well, but we didn't play extremely well, and that's the way you have to do to beat this team. Coach, what did you observe in Davis's play tonight, his first game back from injury? Well, I thought he was okay. I thought he was a little winded, you know, but, uh, you know, obviously they're not going to let him catch the ball and go one-on-one against anybody down there. So anytime he caught it in the post, they sent one, two guys at him, and, uh, you know, we have to have the – the passing lanes open and we have to be able to throw it out and swing the ball and we have to make plays from the weak side. You think he'll be okay to go tomorrow night, Coach? Oh, I think so. Yeah, I think so. You know, he just got to get his timing back. You know, any anytime you've been through training camp and you play and then you start the season and then immediately you have to sit out, you know, it takes you some time, a, a game to get your rhythm back, but I think he'll be fine. What do you think you have to do to get the turnovers? Sure. Well, we only had 16 and... Uh, you know, two of those were charging fouls. So uh, I thought we did a fairly good job with the turnovers. Uh, you know, when you play with the pace that we play with, obviously you're going to have some extra ones. Uh, I just thought that we had a couple where we just lost our focus a little bit, and those are the ones that hurt because if you take the turnovers that you're going to have, then you got to take away the ones uh, that's, that's mental mistakes more so than anything. You mentioned giving up offensive rebounds. Do you think uh, a lot of some of it was just not blocking out, or you just need to no? I mean, when play. you play against this team, also, you know, a lot of long shots, a lot of long rebounds, and sometimes the ball just doesn't bounce your way on the on the long shot. So, uh, you know, we we will be, we'll get better in that area right there. But uh, you know, there's a reason that they're the world champs. You know, they find a way to win games like this, and and uh, you have to find a way to be solid enough to you know, take the advantage that they have away and be able to make some plays. And and uh, we, we just didn't do that tonight. Coach, do you write about Draymond Green's game tonight? He almost had a triple double. And it seems like, you know, Draymond Green bothers a lot of people defensively, but he does at times bother Anthony Davis. Some of you talked about the winning factor and everything like that. You're not going to stop Anthony Davis. No, no, I'm not, because if you want to go back and look at the playoffs that he had against him, he, 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 you know, see what he averaged there. Draymond's a great player. Draymond's a, a, a great defender and a great player, and he's great for his team. You know, I like my guy. I think he's pretty damn good. Okay, his first game back after being after setting out, you know, for two games, you know, his timing wasn't quite there, but uh, I think he's done pretty good against us. Oh, we'll be okay. I mean, it's early in the year, you know. Uh, you know, we're missing three of our top six guys, so it's a long, long year. We're not going to panic or do anything, you know. Uh, we lost to a, uh, a really good Utah team. We lost to a very good Denver team. And we lost to the world champs. And so, uh, you know, there's no reason to panic or do anything else except, um, you know, line up tomorrow and play Portland and try to get better than we were tonight. 
that's that's the way to do it. That was Coach Gentry breaking down the game, giving you his information on it. And uh, DC, before we get to the individual individual stats, my friend, you see in this game, please share with the the family out here your uh, comments quickly on what you thought about uh, why this team lost tonight. Uh, two things, as you said, man, that did, uh those fast three points and those three pointers, man. I mean, it's very hard to beat a team shooting fifty percent from three. I mean, we only lost by ten, but there was a lot of things we could have did better to give ourselves a better chance. But we also let them assist on thirty nine to forty nine shots that they made. I mean, forty seven shots that they made. That is, that's insane, man. Huh? We were neck and neck with them with the turnovers. I mean, they scored more points off the turnovers, but it, it all boiled down to those fast break points and that three-point line. And uh, we usually dominate in the paint. They kick out 52 points in the paint as well. So it's like, man, what, what do you do the team uh, during that? We couldn't defend and we couldn't hang with them scoring. In my opinion, we needed Andy Davis at 100%. And he clearly wasn't that last night. And there's no way we're going to beat the Warriors without AD and Drew Holiday and Nikolai Meritage. All having monster games. And we couldn't put it all together. Couldn't put it all together, indeed. Looking at some of the individual statistics in this one, man, and uh, Ju- Julius uh, Drew Holiday was a top dog. 42 minutes in this one. He's 9 of 19 from the field. 2 of 8 from downtown. 8 of 11 from the free throw line. He had 9 assists in this game. 3 rebounds, a couple of steals, and 28 points for Drew Holiday. Big ups to him and his good effort in this one. And then, of course, the second top scorer in it was Nikolai Miritich, who continues to be the Pelicans' uh, second best offensive weapon behind Anthony Davis. Through 32 minutes of play, Nico had 10 of 15 from the field, 2 of 7 from downtown, 4 of 5 from the line. He had 12 rebounds, 9 of which were defensive rebounds. He had 2 steals in this game. Also, 26 major points in this one. Etwan Moore was bringing up the rear. He had 21 on 9 of 16 shooting from the field, 3 of 4 from downtown. He had 4 rebounds in the contest, but he had 5 personal fouls. So, uh, imagine if his foul total was down through 30 min- 39 minutes, what kind of game uh, Etwan Moore would have really had. So, and of course, Andy Davis came back. First game back in um, in, a, in a couple of games. 41 minutes in his first game back off that, that sprained elbow. 6 of 16 uh, from the field. 1 of 4 from downtown. 4 of 5 from the free throw line. He finished with 12 rebounds in this one. He had several assists in this contest. 7 assists in 17 points for Anthony Davis. Clearly he was still not himself despite the minutes. Off the bench, Julius Randle threw 23 minutes. He was 3 of 6 from the field. He had 10 rebounds in the game and 11 points for Julius Randle's. Had four turnovers, by the way, in this contest. And of yeah, course, they, they made him very uncomfortable. And of course, Solomon Hill uh, was very, uh, once again, ineffective offensively. He only had two points in 12 minutes, one of three from the field, all from two from downtown in the game. Solly Hill uh, didn't even record a rebound in this one. And then, of course, Frank Jackson was really off in this one, one of his uh, worst performances yet. He had 18 minutes of play, scored three points, one of seven shooting from the field, one of four from the three point line in this one. He had four personal fouls uh, and a turnover. He was totally just, this game wasn't there. Then Ian Clark in 12 minutes had five points in the game. Of course, Sheik Diallo didn't play for the life of me. I don't understand. Once again, Sheik Diallo, whose energy effort off the right. bench, did not play. And he was DMP. That, that made crazy. coach's decision. Coach decided just not to play him in the game. And of course, Wesley Johnson, who they traded Alexis Jenker to get Wesley Johnson, he was DMP'd. Jaleel Okafor was DMP'd. And of course, uh, the back, the last player on the bench, Kendrick Williams, we knew he wasn't going to play. But those other guys, I would expect a Wesley Johnson and Sheik Diallo to play Okafor. Of course, this was the statistic, you know, just a little sidebar before we get into the game, before I break down the rest of the game. The funny part about it, DC, man, is the fact that I keep looking at this whole situ- this scenario and it, it, it replays in my mind. See, I, unlike a lot of people that watch sports, they have that nearsightedness. I suffer no such affliction. The reality of the situation is that I go back to last year when Elvin Gentry was coaching this team. And I remember exactly what Elvin Gentry did with Sheik Diallo when he refused to give him minutes. I remember shows, a multitude of shows, where, me, where I was complaining on the mic. Shows yeah, it, se- yeah, several shows where we are blasting, lambasting old man Elvin Gentry for getting old man tunnel vision where he refuses to play uh, Sheik Diallo who would really have helped him in many games. It's the same thing. Dale Demps goes out and I've got, I give credit to Dale Demps. I've softened on Dale Demps because you can't keep hammering the man when he's turned, he's making things happen. Giving so the he's giving Elvin Gentry the players. He traded 
Alexis Jika, who wasn't going to play a lick, and got Wesley Johnson. Wesley Johnson, then they released Troy Williams. Put Wesley Johnson. Wesley well, Johnson. Why did we go out our way to get Troy Williams to release him? They and release him. Never, but that's, be- that's because they added Wesley Johnson. And the thing was, oh, we got Wesley Johnson. But guess what? And it's like, well, he's a young player. He's got to get some experience. No, Wesley Johnson's in his 30s. He's been playing a leaf for So what's his <laughs> excuse now? Finished. Right. So what is your excuse for not playing Wesley Johnson? You see Solomon Hill is ineffective. Why not play Wesley? Wesley Johnson and Jaleel Wesley Johnson Okafor. Wesley Johnson averages 7.2 points for his career. You can't tell me we can't use that? It's totally, but it just, it just befuddles me, man, how just ridiculous sometimes. I just want to grab Elvin Gentry and give him a new pair of glasses to say, look, take these bifocals and look at your lineup and create a off-the-bench lineup that you can depend on. Whatever you're going to do, mix and take Jaleel Okafor, put him in the mix with Julius Randle. I even give it to you, so you don't even have to think, Elvin and Gentry. Just listen to the Pelican Post game report. We'll give it to you. You don't know what to do with your bench? Here's your bench, Ross. This is the five guys that you're going to come off the bench to, to supplement your five starters. Okay, you're listening? Point guard Frank Jacks off the bench. You understand that? That'll be the top guy off the bench. Top center off the bench. Jaleel Okafor off the bench. Number four off the bench. Julius Randle off the bench. Small forward off the bench. Wesley Johnson. And then, of course, I'm going to be leaning and let you pick whatever guard you want to mix in, whether you throw Tim Frazier in there or you throw Ian Clark in there. I preferably will go with Ian Clark because of his shooting. Now, you can muddle, you can put Sheik Diallo and mix him in the mix. And play him as well and kind of supplement him in there. But those five guys should be in the rotation. They're young, up-and-coming players. They need to have more minutes, and that's the problem. Elvin Gentry gets in the way of his team's rotation all the time. He DC, he played nine men a night in uh, against Golden State. He played nine men. Remember we would complain when he only played eight and, yeah. set, and had all those four or five other guys sitting on the more. bench? He played one more. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely to me, man, what it comes down but, to. Uh, I, I think he hit the nail on the head, man, because, I mean, that's what we're going, the way we built this team, this team is built for depth. We have a very good bench compared to a lot of other teams, and why won't we use them? Like, it, it's just, it's crazy. It's very maddening at times. And then you see what things were going with the Warriors. Uh, they, they, got, they got up on us a lot, man. Sometimes when you're playing a team like that and you're overmatched and they're scoring and scoring, I mean, you need to give guys a break. Go deeper in your bench. I mean, we can look at the Warriors. Uh, they went deep. Uh, what, 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 what's their motto? What's it, all hands on deck or something? They have some type of team mantra. Take the guys off their bench. So they went 12 deep against us, against nine. It's absolutely insane. Yeah. Right, we go. We go, I'm gonna have you to hold your comment until the other side of the break. We about to hit the break. When we come back, we are gonna finish up on the topics. What happened with Anthony Davis, Demarcus Cousins, the story behind it by Marcus Spears. Also, we get into the injury report, and we're gonna have the Pelican and Trailblazer preview on the side of the break. Stay with us. You listen to the Pelican Post Game Report. Get ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. Do you need a domain name? How about a host for your website that can work with WordPress? Try Namecheap.com. They make registering, hosting, and managing domain names for yourself or others easy and affordable because of the internet needs people. Namecheap is an ICANN accredited domain register and technology company founded in 2000. It's one of the fastest growing American companies according to the 2018 Inc. 5000. Celebrate nearly two decades of providing unparalleled levels of service, security, and support. Namecheap has been steadfast and Customer satisfaction with over 10 million domains under management. Namecheap is among the top domain registers and web providers in the world. They offer a full selection of popular and unique domains along with fully featured hosting packages, SSL security certificates, who is guard privacy protections, and more, all at the lowest prices in the industry. So if you need a domain name or hosting or anything else, think namecheap.com. That's right, namecheap.com. Check the description section below for link. There's a lot of reasons to be a fan, but only NBAstore.com has all the gear. Sports fans are gearing up and saving big at Fanatics.com, the world's largest collection of officially licensed fan gear. From all the leagues, teams, and players you love, unique one-of-a-kind designs exclusively by Fanatics, and autographed collectibles from today's biggest stars shipped directly to your home. 
Join Fanatics Rewards for free to earn fan cash on every purchase. Shop now and for a limited time, get 20% off all orders. Fanatics.com, officially licensed everything. Get all the latest news and updates from your New Orleans Pelicans at the Pelicans I View. The new and official Pelicans Daily Journal, covering everything Pelicans. Attention everyone. Get, get breakdown on games, free agent signings and potential moves. Unbiased opinions and straight up facts with statistical analysis from G-Bound. Go to www.thesportsdaily.com forward slash Pelicans dash I dash View. What's up, sports world? The PRO Media Network is on a mission to reach 10,000 subscribers. So besides our regular programs like the Sports Coma with Big Q and the Guys, the Pelican Post Game Report, Rapid Fire TSC, and others, we will be expanding out and offering other content like movie, anime, and gaming reviews for your entertainment. So if you enjoy our content, please donate at our Patreon page. Also subscribe, comment, and share and help the PRO Media Network reach 10,000 subs. Peace. You're listening to the Pelicans Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. For all things Pelicans, you're listening to the Pelican Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network. Recapping the Golden State whipping of the Pelicans uh, game uh, is what we're doing here on Podcast 262. And um, what the, the funny thing about it is, is we, DC was breaking it down and all break was talking about it. When you lose to the Golden State Warriors, they had it on their mind they was going to win this game 131 and 121 over the Pelicans. Of course, Pelicans now head into Portland. And we'll recap that game in a few minutes. Not looking good. Pelicans, uh, uh, they're going to have a, this is a very tough stretch and most of these teams are playoff teams. So that's, they're gauging themselves against teams that potentially could be in the playoffs. Denver, uh, Golden State's definitely going to be there. And then you look at Utah, who just, just ran them out of the gym. Quickly, before we get into the rest of our topics, we're going to go in, into and listen, I mean, go over the injury report by the Pelicans. Of course, they still list uh, AD day-to-day with the elbow. They say he might, he's doubtful for the Thursday game against um, Trail Blazers. It'll be interesting to see if he play. Hopefully, I think he probably will play. They say he's doubtful, though. So I hope he didn't aggravate that injury or what have you. Darius Miller, who's missed a handful of games, is still out with a quad. He's been ruled out again. It's the trailblazers. It's you know you don't. He Darius Miller is one of those guys that you don't you don't really miss until he's not there. When he's out there, you know you kind of take him for advantage. But when he's not there, you really see the glaring need of really missing your off the bench best three point shooter. Uh, you know, it's so, to me, uh, Darius Miller is sorely being missed right now. And then, of course, Alfred Payton, man. You know, he went down in the game against Utah where uh, he hurt that ankle, and he's been ruled out for this game and. They're saying possibly, this is coming from Mark Spears of ESPN, that he could possibly play for play in the game against Trailblazers, but I doubt it. You know, there's conflicting reports saying that he's going to be out for this one, but they can damn sure use uh, Alfred Payton, no doubt about it. And, of course, the last one is there is, is uh, Julius Randle. Of course, you know, Julius Randle played 23 minutes in the last game against Golden State. He's still dealing with a foot injury. So they kind of kind of have him on somewhat of a minute restriction and how they handle uh, Julius Randle still working his way out of that foot situation. So that's the Pelicans injury report. And uh, D.C., let's go back to finishing up the recap on this Golden State Warriors so we can move forward with, uh, with the rest of our topics. Uh, feel free to continue your thought from the prior break. Um, my, my thought process basically was talking about how they went deep on us, man. And they got minutes out of their guys and still managed to play 37 minutes on all of this stuff. The Warriors do a fantastic job with their rotation. Um, if Alan Gentry wanted a hint or a tip, I mean, just look at what the other teams are doing and substitution players recording. Because everybody seems to use their bench on us, and we're usually left trying to play eight eight guys now. I mean, it used to be seven. I remember at one time it was seven. That was just ridiculous. But uh, we, we can't continue to do this. I understand we're a little banged up, but you got all those guys hurt. That's even more so. I mean, you got three guys in our starting lineup. Well, 
two in our starting lineup. One potentially uh, coming with uh, Alpha Payton. If he, he starts back, he's still yelling with that injury, but he may play. So you got these guys banged up. AD's hurt, and he plays 41 minutes. The way AD played last night, to be honest, man, I didn't really want to see him play. He says that about 32 minutes last night. He didn't look like AD. To play. Like, why is he playing 41 minutes? Drew Holiday playing 42. I can understand that. It was amazing that each one more played 39 with those uh, five fouls that he had. I understand why Julius Randle only got 23 minutes. Solomon Hill, his 12 minutes because it easily went to Sheik the Island. I'm sure we would have got more production if we would have gotten at the Sheik the Island. Why does Jaleel Okafor not get a shot in the game? Um, I mean, we had a bunch of lobs. A lot of stuff going on in the paint. Jaleel Okafor ain't the best defender, but he's a big body. You can't just completely dog him in the paint, even though he's not Andy Davis. And I'd love to see Wesley Johnson at least suit up and see what he could give us. And we took way too long before we allowed Ian Clark to get 12 minutes. Frank Jackson, I liked him coming out early, but he had an off game. We should have quickly switched Ian Clark, you know, in that situation. So I think Alvin Gentry, a lot of times, what is rotations? I like his offensive line, but what is rotations, man? It's like, does he write this stuff down like two weeks before and he just doesn't adjust it <laughs> based on what, what's going on in the game, based on injuries, based on... He just had his mind made up what he was gonna do as soon as they came out there. As soon as he seen the he seen the team on the schedule, I, I, I don't know how it works with him, but I love to hear him talk about it though. Elvin Gentry, that's the major flaw in the Elvin Gentry game is the fact that he's he is a guy that doesn't adjust well, and that's the the crazy part about it is that he when it comes down to player personnel, it's eight guys. He prefers to play eight to nine guys a night, and that and and that doesn't make sense to me. When you have injuries, you don't want to. It, it, you you win which uh, as a team now of course certain nights Anthony Davis is going to take over Drew Holiday is going to take over and help guide the team but as a team it takes pressure off those guys having to do it all the time then they get worried wore down and then you discover that you don't have that you have enough personnel to win but you don't know how to win without your core star that's an issue. And that's something that they're going to have to get to because obviously Andy Davis might miss a few more games based upon this. They're going to have to learn to win without AD. But anyway, uh, that'll do it for the uh, the Pelican and Golden State Warrior breakdown. A little information here. The Pelicans are playing their fifth game in seven days, their third game in four days, and the second of a back-to-back set tonight in Portland. After playing Golden State last night, in Oakland, the Pelicans head up to Portland where they'll face the Trailblazers team and into tonight's game, a contest where the one day's day's rest on the Pelicans and of course Las Vegas has the Pelicans as a 4.5 favorite. The only way I see that happening is if uh, the referees are obvious uh, they're working for Vegas. That's the only way I can see the Pelicans pulling out this one because if Andy Davis doesn't play, I don't see how they're going to win this game the way they're reeling. But anyway, before we get to the, Port- the that Portland and Pelican preview. Let's get into that story, DC, about uh, DeMarcus Cousins. Of course, DeMarcus Cousins was seen on the sideline having a discussion with Elvin Gentry and Anthony Davis, and he got a little bit animated, and he was walking off and whatnot. And that's like, that's really, you know, kind of odd after the game. You see the little, you know, the little jabbering or whatnot, and he animated. Then, of course, today, Marcus Spears comes out with an article uh, saying Davis hopes Davis hopeful cousins can return to the Pelicans. That's real interesting. Now, DC, you had an opportunity to break this article down and turn it inside out. Tell us your thoughts on uh, what's going on here. I think it's really fascinating, man. Uh, it tells to maybe a little bit of what the conversation was about. It tells to maybe uh, after that display we seen, which the Marcus Cousins looked to be not extremely angry, but he looked a little upset about something. Maybe Al Gentry and. Uh, Andy Davis told him, like, maybe behind the scenes, maybe he told them he was going to stay, you know, and uh, they might have called him out on that. And maybe they had a conversation after the game. Who knows? I don't know, man. It just seems a little weird for that that that, uh, that exchange to happen. We all saw it. It was like, damn, what, what the hell could they have possibly say? And then the next day, you see AD uh, basically report this to the media. So something's going on. Uh, I don't know what it is. I don't really know how to feel about it to this point. Uh, you know how we are here. New Orleans fans are loyal, man. And a lot of times, if you leave on a bad note, we don't really want you back. DeMarcus Cousins could possibly change his tune if he comes back a more mature person. I'm sure he's learning how to be a complete team player over there with the Golden State Warriors, as he's kind of started to do with us. So it'll be interesting to see how all this plays out in the offseason, man. It's a very intriguing story. And I just think the timing and the fact that AD would say that 
after that exchange that we all witnessed and everybody made a big deal about is very telling to me. So all right, well, Andy, David, you tell me your take on it. What you think going on? I think uh, I think it's possible, man. Anything's possible in the NBA. Um, you know, you have and as a when you follow sports, you know, like we've been following these teams for many years, Saints, Pelicans, LSU, whatever. We talk about things. We don't, we don't just be flabbering on. We know these teams because we followed them for years. We have a passion for these teams. So we decided to follow them. So the, knowing the history and how the teams behave, because you have an opportunity to be exposed to the, uh, to ownership and knowing how the teams move around and how they think. This is obviously a intriguing thing because Andy Davis was quoted as saying he will be a great, a great free agent next year. Hopefully down the line we can reconnect. He told ESPN's uh, the undefeated that Wednesday night after the loss. So reconnect Anthony Davis reaching out to DeMarcus cousin. Obviously I really do think that the, the uh, New Orleans Pelicans wants to keep this guy and a lot of people are not going to be enamored with DeMarcus Cousins and the Pelicans are probably one of the maybe two teams that will actually make a serious bid at him. And I think the Pelicans have been exposed to him enough to know how he looks next to Anthony Davis and how that would look. So to get him in a long term deal and then to get AD in a max contract would definitely hold AD in New Orleans with DeMarcus Andrew Holiday. And ultimately, we'll get what we thought we was going to get last year. As he comes back with a ring, because obviously Golden State's the favorite, right? So in the end, yeah. I think I think that when you think about it like that, I think that works out. And like you said, we are very forgiving. And also, go the the general manager of the Pelicans, Mister Dale Demps, is a guy that believes in recycling guys. He doesn't hold that against him. He brings these guys all the way time. And also, while I'm on the topic of Dale Demps, let me mention the fact that we need to talk about Danny Ferry, who is the special assistant that Dale Demps had had added to the team to help him with these moves. I noticed when Danny Ferry and Dale Demps reconnected, you started seeing these changes and these great trades and all this. Because they're working together as a team. Often Dale Demps is getting the credit, but Danny Ferry is in the building. You best believe Danny Ferry is uh, also, these guys are brainstorming and they're reshaping this this team to be a perennial playoff team. Pelicans did what they did against Portland. And of course, obviously, that's going to be the trend. And Danny Ferry, who used to be a general manager, and had successful stops in Atlanta where there was a perennial playoff team. And the same with Cleveland. So it's very interesting to see that he's here. And a lot of people don't talk about that connection. But we need to start mentioning that. Anyway, now that we move away from that story, let's get into the, the Pelicans versus Trailblazers preview. DC, of course, this game is going to be interesting because like we talked about in the sports coma, Big Q and the guys, we always talk about the fact that the with, the with the Saints going up and knocking off the Vikings for what they did last year, they, they had it on their mind. You know, this is one of the, the the situation where it could work in reverse as the Pelicans just manhandled Portland in the playoffs. When, when Portland were eliminated, that's all they thought about off season was getting even with the Pelicans. They get their first opportunity uh, tonight as they face off against the Portland Trailblazers. Now you know this team. What's your pick and prediction on who wins this game? This is uh, you know me. I always like to be positive and be like, oh, the Pelicans are going to win just to say it and think it into reality. But tonight, uh, man, it's a 50-50 shot. It, it depends on uh, which Pelican team shows up. If the same Pelican team in the same rotation shows up against the Golden State Warriors to Portland, Portland will easily beat them. Damian Lillard, regardless of what Pelican team shows up, will be in rare form tonight. He's hot right now. Um, I don't see him cooling down at any point. I know Drew Holiday and uh, Rondo defended him pretty well, but Alfred Payton is not here, and we don't really know if Frank Jackson is going to be out there. So the tandem of him and C.J. McCullough may be able to get off with just Drew Holiday being out there. So uh, I might have to say, man, I, I want to say the Pelicans are going to win, but I think the Portland Trailblazers take this one tonight. Man, uh, like you said, they've been thinking about this all off season. We dumped on one of their players, and it was a very embarrassing play. We made a T-shirt out of it and blew them out of the playoffs. If they had one team on their board to beat, it, it would be us. They definitely, um, they definitely looking for revenge. They're gonna be in the motor center about nineteen thousand yeah, plus. They five, people they five and two right now, too, man. That's right on they, a two game winning streak, by the way. So this is the statistics we're gonna get into. The points Andy Davis, of course, leading the team, is a top point man. Twenty five and a half points a game. Rebounds, thirteen and a half rebounds, a, a thirteen rebounds flat a game for Andy Davis. Of course, Drew Holiday leads the team with assists with eight assists a game. Damian Lillard, twenty. 9.6, might as well say 30 points a game. He's averaging right now, uh, shooting 50%, over 50% from the field. He is he's definitely hot. And then Nurkic, 
the big center is averaging about 10 rebounds a game to lead his team. And then Lillard also leads his team in points and in assists, giving about six, six assists a game. Only injury worth noting for the Trailblazers is Mo Harkless. He is going to be out for this game. Now, the Pelicans averaging 122 points a game while giving up 121 points a game, shooting about 49% from the field. They have about 47 rebounds a game, 27 assists, five blocks, eight steals, and they're currently on a three-game losing streak. The last 10 games, they're 4-3, 117 Four. points a game. Holding you to 109, shooting 47% from the field, rebounding. It's about 51 rebounds a game, 20 assists per game, five and a half blocks per game, six steals per game, and they're currently on a two game winning streak and are five and two the last 10 contests. Big deal. Pelicans have to go to the motor sitter, 19,000 plus in the building. And my take is this a lot of people picking that the Golden, the uh, Portland Trailblazers is going to just finish the Pelicans off. They won four in a row, they lose four in a row. The interesting part about this is, you know, in the pri- previous shows, sometimes I'd really be crossing over myself because I was like, when I, I said, you know what, I'm thinking this, hopefully this won't be the beginning of a losing streak. And and I felt it because I seen how they lost to Utah, and then the next game how they right. came out, they it, they showed minimal thing. But I'm not. It's not they the, the next exactly. So it's not. It's not they the team. It's the coaches. The coaching decisions is getting getting in the way of the team. The coach is not finding a solid bench, bench rotation and utilizing those guys effectively against these teams. Ultimately, if he had right. done that, they would have won at least two of these games. And of course, Golden State. That would have been the only team I say, well, they don't have a chance against Golden State the way they're playing right now. Golden State's playing. But those other teams like Denver and Utah, the Pelicans should have won those games, obviously. And it was bad coaching that got in the way because he don't know how to mix up his, his line. I mean, well, I he keep... had a good lineup against uh, Denver and Utah, but he waited all the way till the end of the third quarter to use. I think that I, I have both, to... both days. <laughs> I would say he had a decent lineup against Denver. I didn't like what he did against Utah. I still feel that he should, with knowing Anthony Davis wasn't going to be there, you have to play big against big. You have to use your seven-footer. You have to use it. That, and Jaleel Okafor is not Alexis Jink. You understand what I'm saying? I, and what I mean right. by that is he's not some slowful seven-footer that can't give you the, This guy was a former top five first-round draft pick only three years ago. So you mean to tell he, me... He was never known for his, his defensive ability. But you don't need that. You don't need that defense. He's a seven-footer. That's right, and then his, but he's known for his offensive game, which would give Rudy Gobert problems and force Rudy Gobert into fouling situations, which will help you. You put his body on Rudy Gobert, you would stop that. I done said that the last two shows, so I'm not going to just beat a dead horse. What I'm saying is, his coaching decisions is the reason why this team was is losing these games. It's not because they don't have enough talent. It's this man don't know how to get the right pieces off the bench to help. Sheik Diallo should have played last night, like you said, and we keep saying the same thing. Frank Jackson needs extended minutes. Sheik Diallo needs he, minutes. He and Okafor needs minutes it. Minutes last night. He, Frank Jackson is short. But a couple of games, but the previous games and that was, was the problem. But the previous games, the same thing when they benching a Frank Jackson. Yeah. What's the issue with that? So what I'm saying is... <laughs> so that's my thing, man. L. Gentry's got to get that together, and that's what I said. My his old my his old man mind, I call it. Which you know, old people they get to a point. Some old people are stubborn. They get they set in their ways and they won't change. That's why we need energetic new coaching to come in here and do that. You can't get into your old man mind and you see they out there struggling and you keep that same dead ass shit out there. Anyway, let's move. And I'm gonna make my kind. DC made his call. I hope we don't be like that with the Pelican post game when we get old. No, we get... <laughs> I'm going to keep my Pelicans. I don't care. No, we're not going to be like L. Gentry because we're going to make it a point to not be like L. Gentry. So that's right. But anyway, my call on this one is we about to get out of here. I have to say, you know what? In my mind, Anthony Davis is more than likely not going to play this game. Of course, the late the latest report is, the latest report is saying that he's he is he's doubtful for this game. But if he plays, if he plays in this game, I, I think that the Pelicans. You know what? I say the Pelicans are going to beat this Portland Trailblazers. I'm going on a limb. I'm gonna go out on a limb and give it to the Pelicans. Now I've been calling. I, I'm going to give it to them. I'm going to say the Pelicans are going to get by with a tough win against Portland and stop that slide. I think that's the things that the Pelicans have to focus 
focus on doing. I know they don't want to complete this road trip the way they do and come back with their tail between their legs, getting whipped by those teams. The Pelicans stop the bleeding and get a win against Portland in the Motor Center. I'm going to give it that call. So that, that, that's what's going to happen. You know, the Bulls, uh, once they end their road trip, the Bulls ain't, ain't looking like free lunch. You know, they, they actually playing pretty good. Anyway, you know, the, that's, that might be true. But, you know, we, we're going to see. But anyway, that'll do it for the show today. Thanks, you guys, for chiming in with us on the Pelican Post Game Report, episode 262. And as always, if you enjoy the show, you can support the shows in a number of ways. You can help us out. You can join patreon.com slash the PRO Media Network and become a contributor where you can also, you know, financially assist the show to help us get closer and closer to show show realities like the, the Sports Coma Live, is which is the next thing we're working on, a live show where we'll be able to interact with you through telephone conversation and super for chat as well. We also have social media pages where you can join and subscribe, share the links with your family, friends and other people. And then of course this is sponsors, our sponsors. You know, go to the sponsors and, and buy something from the sponsors to help the show. Those three different ways you can help this platform out tremendously. And remember, it's all our platforms. We're here together and we're talking about the team that we love to cover and having fun doing it. So, you know, if you can, you know, do whatever you can to help us out here at the Pelican at Pelican Post Game Report and the PRO Media Network. And as always, thank you guys for chiming in, new and established listeners of the show. And from me and DC and the whole Pelican Post Game Report staff, peace. Peace. Post Game Report on the PRO Media Network for all things Pelicans. What's up, sports world? It's Big Q. Talking at you from the PRO Media Network, letting you know that we're attempting to make things a lot simpler on our listeners and viewers of our mini podcast. So as a result, we're leasing down a lot of our shows to have their own channels for your convenience. Starting soon, shows like Ring King Box, LSU's Tough Tiger Talk, the Pelican Post Game Report will all have their own individual YouTube channels. So thank you for working with us during this process. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for commenting. And thank you for everything. Thank you for your donations and support for our platform as we continue to improve moving forward. Peace. T is your escape. It's your opportunity to create a moment for stillness, for reflection, for yourself. It's your connection to a world of senses, flavors both exotic and familiar, energizing and relaxing. It's your retreat from an increasingly turbulent world. It's the perfect paradox of simplicity and complexity. Teabox.com connects tea to people, uniting the richest flavors of the finest teas with the curious, the cultivated, and the adventurous all over the world. The freshest tea you've ever tasted from crop to cup. There's simply no simpler way to experience the wonderful complexity of tea. Tea box packing up the freshness. Tea thrives on freshness, and so do they. Tea box temperature and humidity control facility ensure that tea is maintained. The teas themselves go into an oblique bags with aluminum layers that protect them from excess moisture. And like with tea box, shopping for fresh, loose leaf tea is easy because you make an informed purchase. You know exactly where your tea is coming from. So for the freshest teas in the world, check out teabox.com. That's right, teabox.com. Check the link in the description section below. NewFrog.com for all of your electronic gadget needs. Fast becoming number one online seller of cell phone and accessories, consumer electronics, automobiles and motorcycles, home and garden items, 5D diamond painting crafts, electrical and tool supplies, computer and networking supplies, lights and lighting supplies, sports and travel items, toys and hobby supplies, apparel and accessories, mother and kid items, health and beauty items, and much, much more. NewFrog.com has up to 70% off on some products and you can check out their weekly promotions for all the best deals. Remember, when thinking online electronics and gadgets, think New Frog, newfrog.com. Check the link in the description section below. What's up, sports world? This Big Q from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. 
talking to you about the website, theposhlifestyle.com. That's right, poshlifestyle.com. A great website where you can get great products at great prices. They sell organic herbs, vitamins, supplements, water filters for your home, EMF and cell phone radiation protection, healing magnetics, and healing crystals, personal protection devices like cell phones, stun guns, and mace spray, organic deodorants, shampoos, soaps, toothpaste, and more. They also sell 10A grade Brazilian hair. 10A music is available now. All kind of the latest downloadable mixtapes. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to theposhlifestyle.com. That's the posh lifestyle. Life spell with a Y. L Y F E style.com. Put in the sports coma for the 10% discount on your purchase. It's a win-win. So get your mind and body right with the posh lifestyle. In today's world, children are bombarded with negativity on television, online, and at school. Our kids need to have a positive outlook on life and the world around them. I want to share with you a valuable resource you can use to bring positivity into your child's life. It's the new book, 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, A Guide to Positive Child Self-Image. From author and dad, G.J. Barabino. This is a simple guide loaded with wonderful and inspirational affirmations designed to uplift young people's spirits. This positive and powerful children affirmational is chock full and loaded with wonderful inspirational sayings that will lift your child's self-image to whole new levels through the awesome power of spoken word. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image from author and dad, G.J. Barabino. Available on Amazon. Order a copy for yourself, your child's teachers, or anyone you know with children. 101 Powerful Children Affirmations, a guide to positive child self-image. Order your copy today. Vapor DNA is the absolute premier online vape store. Offering an industry leading selection of e cigarettes, e liquids, and accessories. Our friendly and knowledgeable customer service team is always ready to provide the best customer service experience to ensure you find what you're looking for. We guarantee our vaping gear shop products to be 100% genuine and the lowest. We are so confident in our selection and our customer service, we will offer our customers a 45 day refund policy. That's right, a 45 day refund policy. We are proud of this offer for three simple reasons. Quality, selection, and price. And that is the reason you should choose Vapor DNA for all your vaping needs. That's www.vaporDNA.com. Again, that's www.vaporDNA.com. 